Hi, I'm Tim Kilduff and this is Business Matters. It's a program that focuses on business and more importantly, the people who run those businesses. As we do more and more of these programs, it becomes obvious there's a lot of interesting people doing a lot of interesting things. And that's particularly true of our guest today, Leslie Riley, who is uh, the founder, developer, promoter, instructor of BCOM Yoga. BCOM Yoga. Well, lots to talk about. So can we get right into it? Absolutely. I think yoga is a, a, the subject matter itself probably needs some, some definition. I don't think most people really understand uh, what yoga is. There are varying degrees and there are varying sort of disciplines and so forth. But can you help us sort of put a definition around it? Yoga is, um, means union. Right, yoga is union, um, uniting, connecting. Um, most people think of yoga as a very um, ancient Eastern experience, um, tied mostly to meditation, um, not so much on the physical side. Yoga today, yoga, Western, um, is very physical based. It is connecting not only the body with the mind, but the mind with the spirit. So how did you get to this point? Uh, that, that's, that's a great, that's a great objective, but you started out somewhere. You didn't start out as a yoga instructor. We have, talk to us a little bit about your background. You know, how did, how, what brought you to this practice uh, and what's your experience like? Well, it's interesting. Um, I never would think that I'd be sitting here talking to you about being a yoga instructor. Um, I actually left you know, the corporate world and was a stay-at-home mom for a number of years and um, was a big gym rat, would spend a lot of time cycling, um, working out, outside, and um, ended up having two major um, torn meniscuses in my knees. And uh -huh. so it was through that rehabilitation process that I was not able to go to the gym um, that a friend said to me, why don't you come try yoga? And I was like, yoga? How you know, intense is yoga going to be? Is that going to really give me a workout? Um, but I couldn't work out at the gym any longer, so I needed to uh, find some other way to give me that, um, that strength. So um, I found myself in a yoga studio. You know, I think men in general, maybe this is an overgeneralization, think that in order to be fit, you've got to be doing heavy-duty cardiovascular or we, we need to get in the weight room and we got to lift weights and can you achieve the same kind of fitness doing yoga? Oh, well, of course you can. Um, yoga is the kind of power yoga that, um, that we're hoping to bring to Hopkinton is really um, very strength-based. You're using all 600 plus muscles in the body at the same time. So where if you go to the gym and you work your upper body, you're working just your upper body. When you are in yoga, you're working all of your muscles together at the same time. So you, you have a problem, physical problem. You can't go to the gym. You, wh wh where did you seek out? Where did you go to try yoga? What was, your yeah, what was your first experience like? So my first experience was I had no idea that you um, needed a special mat um, <laughs> and that I was going to be sweating um, and that there was no talking. There was a lot of quiet and stillness. And I think that was really a challenge for me because um, I came from a very active place, like wanting to do and go and so forth um, energetically. So for me to be able to be still was a challenge. And then you throw in the physical component of the actual postures, the asanas. Um, so my first experience was pretty challenging. It was, very, it was hard. How long did it take you to uh, sort of get the bug and, and then decide, gee, I'd like, to, I'd like to teach others? So my first experience in, in trying yoga was back in 2005, and I probably um, spent the first 30 classes saying, what the heck am I doing here? This is, I'm going to kill my friend for making me come to this class. Yeah. Um, but what would happen is after I would leave, my body was physically exhausted, yet energized at the same time. 
And then when I would see how I would feel throughout the day after the practice, I was like, wow. There was like those kind of aha, like, oh my gosh, I feel so much calmer, more relaxed, less stressed, um, just, you know, more um, centered, focused. Um, and those were areas that I could use, anybody, I guess, could use. But so that's kind of what kept bringing me back and back to, um, to the studio. And so probably about a year or so of, of practicing that I really felt this, um, this great love for it and said, oh my gosh, let me just kind of learn more. So I didn't actually come into it as I want to be a teacher of this. I just kind of came after it as I want the opportunity to learn more. And so it was from that that I then started my first teacher training. And now where do you go for that? Where, where does one get taught? Oh, there's so many different places. Um, there's, there's national chains that you can go through. Um, I personally am trained through um, Baron Baptiste, which is in Cambridge and Brookline. Um, but there's a whole host of, of different teaching schools different, and institutes. Different, we talked a little bit about, uh, I want to just explore the sort of different forms. I know we, we couldn't sit here and explain how many forms of yoga are there, but there are multiple forms of yoga. Yoga, how did you decide on the, on the, the practice that you're, you're involved in and you teach? Well, because what's important was the whole physical component yeah, for me okay. and the athletic-based. I wanted strength, flexibility. I also wanted the cardiovascular piece. I had some rehabilitation. Um, at the time, I, you do, I didn't want to give up um, my gym or my cycling, so it was a complement to my, um, you know, what I was already doing as far as um, activities and exercise. So I was able to just add it in, kind of sprinkle it in as extra. Um, but as far as the, um, what led me to that specific kind, that was just what I tried. Um, years prior to that, I tried at what was called Kundalini Yoga, um, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. And it's a lot of very relaxing, um, restorative, a lot of breath work. It just didn't give me, you know, the, the power that I was looking for, the strength or the, it just didn't, mm. I didn't feel it in my body. Yeah, I understand. How the, the training, how long did, did, did the training take? How long, how long do you get to the, how long does it take to get to the point where you feel comfortable and confident that you can, you can lead a class? A long time, <laughs> a long time. Um, well, what they have, so I went through a 200 hour certification process. Um, and then you have a number of um, modules of things that you need to do in order to not only do the actual training, but then you have to, um, you have to assess all different kinds of yoga, you have to do, you know, practice teaching. Um, y there's a whole host of um, book work, if you will, does it, does alongside it, of the 200 hours. Does that involve classes on anatomy and the, the structure, physical structure of the body? Oh yeah, absolutely. See, I, I think probably that's, a, that's an area that people aren't aware of. You just don't go do this. No. No. I mean, it's, it took me a long time. I mean, I started in 2005 practicing. I took my first teacher training in 2007. Um, I got certified in 2009. Wow. Give me that again. So 2005 was like my first class, okay. if you will. Yeah. Um, and then in 2007, I took my first teacher training. Okay. And so you can start teaching right away, but to become certified, so um, Yoga Alliance is kind of like a national known organization that you get certified through. So depending on whatever um, yoga school you want to go to, you then want to take it and become, um, to be recognized globally. Okay, so now you have this expertise gained over a period of time and you decide you want to turn it into a business. Tell us about that. How did, how did you get started? Hmm. So here I am, this certified instructor, and you end up going around and teaching at all different studios. Um, initially, when I went through my training, you look to kind of um, practice a little bit, practice your teaching. So um, I got a few friends together, and they came to my home, and I taught them. And then the more you, I did it, the more I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. And you could see the changes in people's bodies. Um, I could see the change in people's, um, you know, their stress level, like they might be coming in, flying through the door, rushing because they got their kids off to school, but then this was their time. It was an opportunity for them to just be 
you know. So I think that really gave me the taste for the teaching. And then I went out and started teaching at other um, places in the area. And then you, then eventually you opened up your own studio. In my home, yes. Oh, okay. That's yes. where you did. Where did you, what, what was, what's the geographic area that you taught in? Um, so I've taught in um, Natick, um, Framingham, where else? Wellesley, Westboro, Bellingham, now, Boston. One of, really? One of the things that, um, that I did find out about you is that, and I was actually quite surprised, uh, if you, in any of the classes that you held in this particular area, you have people that drive what I would consider a substantial distance to come to your classes. I, I, one somewhere up near Chelmsford or somewhere that, that drive and take these classes. Right, yes. I mean, I think, that's, I think that says a lot. You gotta be doing something right. Well, what happens is, is people get connected to certain people. And so therefore, um, you know, people come to yoga for all different reasons. So somebody might feel as though, wow, you know, I really like the fact that Leslie will challenge me or she'll help me to go to what we call our edge. So that place of, you know, where you're really uncomfortable, but yet you're looking for that leap of faith to be able to try something new. So people, you know, connect with people. How wide is that geographic network from which you draw? I would say all around the Boston, you know, in and around the Boston community, in and around our community, probably 30 miles or so. And now you've decided to open up a studio in Hopkinton, outside of your home. Yes. That's got to be a pretty big leap. It's awesome. It Why? Is. Why? Well, because now it's my own. So what happens is, is as a teacher, you go out and you're going into all these different studios right and you're just an instructor supporting their community um, now I have the opportunity to create my own community so you don't uh, as you build this you went you went looking for space yes obviously we're in hot we're sitting in Hopkinton and in this program is about businesses in Hopkinton but you could have put your studio anywhere mm -hmm. what what attracted you to to make the decision to to place it here you could be in Upton you could uh, Right. I don't know why, but you could be in Upton. And I did look at, you know, a number of different places, not only in Hopkinton, but also, you know, just to do my due diligence to check all the different, you know, areas. Hopkinton is very unique. I mean, beside the fact that I reside, I live here, um, that's kind of an extra that I'm going to be so close and convenient. Um, but it's a very health conscious, um, wellness based town. Um, very well poised with the Boston Marathon. Um, starting here, there's a lot of athletes. So my original thought was, why wouldn't I take that community that there's a lot of avid runners here, there's a lot of athletes. A lot of them don't do yoga, you know, or not power yoga. So um, it's also strategically located, I feel as though um, being a Baptiste certified teacher and the only Baptiste studio is in Boston and in Rhode Island, um, Hopkinton is, is set perfectly to give me 45 minutes, whether it's from the Rhode Island to Hopkinton to Boston and so forth, so. And where are you gonna be, where are you gonna be in Hopkinton? So we're gonna be on 135 um, and the lower level of St. Paul's Church. That's, now that's an interesting decision in and of itself. I, I, I think it also says something about the church being, being willing and open to bringing in something that's uh, non-denominational, so to speak. I think that, that must have been an interesting set of discussions. Actually, the church was extremely open. Um, they had a big open space. Um, it really, it was difficult, I think, initially to kind of get my arms around how it was going to look, how I wanted. You know, it was very important to me that it's set up in such a way that it's not looked at, it's not an extension of the church. It is a yoga studio. Um, it, it's actually ideal because the church isn't used quite as often, so it's not like there's a lot of noise and so forth. It's um, it's surreal. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah, you know, I, I, that is, that is perfect, and it makes eminent sense from their perspective as well to use facilities that sit quiet most of the week. That's a pretty uh, pretty interesting decision. What? What's been a surprise in terms of now? You're starting a small business. Uh, what's, what's surprised you about it? Anything yet? 
what surprised me. Um, all the details. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. The whole construction has taken on a whole life of its own. You know, you start thinking that you're you're going to modify, you know, one part of the space, and you do that, and then you stand back and look at it, and you say, mm, now I need to change this, and now I need to change that. Mm. Um, so structurally, I think that's probably been um, a challenge for me. You know, the business side, you know, that I'm hoping that'll be a piece of cake. Well, let's hope that uh, you're overwhelmed and it, uh, it's going to take some attention to detail. There you go. The, uh, building, the, building the business. You, I'm assuming you're going to have an opening. When are you going to open the studio? So I'm going to have a grand opening on March 26th. Okay. Uh, which is Saturday. The, and it'll be a whole day of just different events. And um, there'll be an actual class where they'll have an opportunity. People can come in and kind of sample a bunch of the different teachers' classes. Also, we'll have an interactive demo. Um, so if someone just wants to kind of see what this style of yoga is like. You know, a lot of people aren't used to the heat. This is a heated studio. Okay, so now, you, you, now you've just ad added another element. You use the word staff. Um, obviously, you, well, I would assume you don't teach all the classes, so there's a staff component. You have, to, you have to bring people in to do these classes, don't you? What's that like? That's been pretty cool because, you know what, I know so many people in the industry um, by going to all these different trainings and so forth. Um, I think the challenge is going, for me is going to be um, it is my business. It is right. this community, and it's essential that um, all the instructors, um, although unique and in their own individuality, but yet still are promoting and creating the same common thread that I'm looking for as far as the sense of community, being able to have yoga for everybody, and so forth. Do the, uh, do the, the obviously the personalities of the people vary, but do their, the, the way they teach has got to be very different. You, you, th th not everybody teaches the same way. Uh, you might push, so to speak, using ordinary language. You might push a person. Are, does it take different kind of personalities? Yeah, I mean, primarily the studio is going to be a Baptiste um, studio, which means that it's going to follow a very um, succinct progression through the class. But each teacher will be able to um, you know, sprinkle in their own personality. But the poses and the sequence, there's some room for massage, but it's not extreme. So although the teacher's personalities are differentiating, the practice is pretty much um, a standard. Let's talk about the class itself. Sure. Are they um, half an hour, hour, longer? What's the standard uh, session? Normal classes are 90 minutes. There's 90. also 90 minutes. Some of them are 75. There's also 60-minute um, power hours, as they're called, like for lunchtime, for people that work in the community that want to be able to come over and just take an hour class. Um, that obviously runs at a little bit quicker pace. Why are, uh, why are people reluctant to try this? Are there, they, they gotta be, I, I would think that it takes some marketing Right, some convincing to get people, if, if, whether they're a marathoner or not, and I, I would concur with you about that. I know a lot of runners who don't stretch, let alone do yoga. What, what, what's it take? How do you go about convincing somebody to say, you know, you ought to try this? I don't really think that you need to convince people. I think that it really, it takes somebody else having a, an experience, someone else trying it, and then you hear from someone else, oh my gosh, my back isn't bothering me today. Or geez, my knee was bothering me, and now you know, it's feeling so much better. Um, I mean, certainly getting the word out there about you know, health and wellness, and you know, we're an aging community, obviously. Everybody is, you know, wants to be as strong and flexible um, and have the same kinds of range of motion, reducing of stress, increasing their cardiovascular system, all of that as we age. So. It's just evolving. So it's, like, it's a sense people come to you, don't they? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the right do. time, the right place. You're there. Some, somehow they become aware of it, and they find you in, in part, don't they? I think more and more doctors are promoting yoga. You'll hear more and more um, 
you know, the whole kind of holistic approach to medicine has really brought more people aware and created more of um, a sense of awareness for, for yoga. And again, this isn't, you know, a sedentary kind of yoga. This is a power yoga. You're, you're moving from one pose to the next in a sequence in the heat. You know, it generates, gets the body moving, you're flushing out toxins, your muscles are softer. So there's so much more um, there for the body. And then off also it taps into the mind. There's got to be varying degrees. So is, is there a beginner, intermediate, expert levels? What's important to be calm is that we um, provide yoga for everybody and that yoga is for life. So you can um, be a beginner and be an advanced yogi and practice side by side, mat to mat. And because there's modifications, right? You can modify a pose if you're working with an injury or you know, you're newer, your balance isn't as strong. Um, or you could be an advanced yogi and you might be doing, you know, intensifying the posture. The postures never end, they continue to grow with the body. So people can be in the same class? Absolutely, beginners. Really? absolutely. Some people don't like the heat as much, so there's you know, um, low heat, there'll be no heat classes and so forth, yes. What does the heat do? The heat opens up the muscles, lets the muscles, um, makes them warm so that you can stretch. You know, if you stretch in a cold room, I mean, think about how your body feels and then you put yourself in the heat, um, the muscles have time to, to warm, to become more pliable, which then allows you to open them more. You know, and, and I'm sorry for all these basic questions, but I'll bet they're the questions that you get uh, often. Oh, sure. uh, you know, I'd, I'd really like, with the time that's left, to kind of explore uh, sort of, not, not just your vision, but beyond that. If you had a, uh, if you had a hope, not just a vision, but a vision then tied to your, your hope and your expectation about what could happen at BCOM. Have you thought about that? I hope that I have 55 people in class every day in every class. <laughs> and, and from uh, the business model, that's great, right? I, we, we would, we would all, I, everyone mm -hmm. would agree with that, but there's gotta be more than that. Again, for me, it's being able to share with the whole community, so not just people in, let's say, you know, our kind of age bracket, not to, to date ourselves or anything, Tim, and I'm sure that you are <laughs> much younger than me. Um, no, but to be able to really tie into, you know, the youth, right, and to tie in, and to be able to offer yoga to the whole community. All right, I want to talk, and, and, and I think that's absolutely terrific. I want to talk about youth in particular. We, we look at the media, we look at television reports all the time, newspaper reports, the issue of obesity focused at, at, uh, on, on young people. Is this a way, is this a way to get at that particular issue? I think that yoga for young people is huge. I think it is just growing. Um, these kids are so stressed out they're running around, they're, you know, their parents have them in so many different activities. School is so, um, has so much pressure tied to it. So yoga is an opportunity for them to find quiet, peace, as well as to help them with their whole um, sports, whatever they're doing, even if they're into music, let's say. It doesn't matter. They all, everybody needs yoga, especially the youth. And there's more and more kids doing it. Let's go to the other, the other end of the age spectrum then. Is there a limit? Oh no. Patabi Joyce you know, was in headstand for 30 minutes every day at 90 something years old. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, I mean, I just did a whole, um, there's a fundraiser, I mean, a, um, not a fundraiser, there was a, um, Milford Wittensville did a um, MS yoga for um, people that have MS through the hospital and, um, it was all teaching yoga to these older people in chairs that didn't have the ability to get on the floor. So, and they're old and some of them are you know, wheelchair bound. The potential here seems to be um, almost limitless in a, in a sense. Um, and it's, it, 
I can appreciate the sense of detail on, uh, on establishing a business. That, that's one element. But there's a, a substantial attention to detail on the yoga part of it. And then this sort of expansive view that you have. So if there was one thing, one message that you would want to send to the community, what would it be? Give it a try. Give it a try. Give it a try. All right. Not once. All right. I think that's, uh, I think that's the absolute appropriate way to end this discussion. I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact that uh, you've chosen to establish a business in this community. It's a community, obviously, that's, uh, that's vibrant. And I particularly appreciate how you defined it in your sense of understanding about uh, the kind of people that make up this community. And we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you on your mat. <laughs> <laughs>